everyone, welcome to episode 4 of Talk Blockchain to Me. Today I want to focus on something that has gained increasing popularity and traction in the blockchain space, Ethereum. If you have been following my YouTube channel, by now you have some basic understanding of what blockchain technology is, what bitcoins are, how they relate to each other, and how they work. If you haven't watched them, hit up the links in the description box below. So if you invest in cryptocurrency, you know that Ethereum as of today is the second most popular cryptocurrency that is being traded in the crypto space. But Ethereum is so much more than just a digital currency. Before I launch into the specifics, let's first rewind and go back to looking at the origins of Ethereum. So in November of 2013, which is four years after Satoshi Nakamoto published the Bitcoin white paper, a 19-year-old Canadian named Vitalik Buterin published a paper online titled A Next Generation Smart Contract and Decentralized Application Platform, where he introduces the invention of Ethereum. So like the Bitcoin network or the Bitcoin blockchain, Ethereum is also a form of public distributed technology blockchain. In other words, it is an open network which is managed by its users. There is a Bitcoin blockchain and there is an Ethereum blockchain. But that is where the similarities end. Remember in my last video, I described Bitcoin as a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system, which means that it is pretty much just used for digital payment. Ethereum actually goes beyond that, and what makes Ethereum so unique is its purpose, capability, and technology. So before the invention of Ethereum, if a developer wanted to build an application on the blockchain, they really couldn't do it unless they wanted to develop a brand new platform for it. And what makes Ethereum so flexible is the innovation of the Ethereum virtual machine. So this is a software that runs on the Ethereum network, and it allows for anyone to run any program on it regardless of what kind of programming language you use. Basically, in Ethereum, one blockchain fits all of the different computer program languages and can be tailored to allow for their development. So instead of having to build an entirely original blockchain for each new application, Ethereum enables the development of potentially thousands of different applications all on one platform. In Vitalik Buterin's paper, he writes, The intent of Ethereum is to create an alternative protocol, or a program with rules, for building decentralized applications. And Ethereum does this by building what is essentially the ultimate abstract foundational layer. So with the understanding of the Ethereum virtual machine, we come to understand Vitalik's intent a little better. One important feature that Vitalik introduces to the Ethereum blockchain is called a smart contract. This was actually a concept that was first proposed in 1997 by a digital currency expert and cryptographer, Nick Sabo. So what exactly is it? When most people think contracts, what comes to mind are terms and conditions, paper and ink, and a signature that accepts the terms and conditions. Now let's move this concept into the digital world. Basically, smart contracts are like little computer program boxes that contain a certain value and will only unlock if certain conditions are met. So, you know, if ABC happens, then XYZ will happen. In fact, we already live in a world where smart contracts kind of exist. Nick Sabo uses the example of a vending machine. If you think about it, vending machines are a little bit like automatic contracts. There's the understanding that if you put $2 into the machine and the machine accepts it, then it will spit out the bottle of water that you wanted. So in this case, the process of contract enforcement becomes automated. Now to take that one step further, smart contracts that are on a blockchain provide for a more efficient way to enforce more complicated contracts. For example, when you buy a car and you take out a loan for it, you need to be paying your monthly payments in order to keep the car. Now, a lot of creditors face a common headache when people don't pay their payments. Um, the creditors will first have to review all these loan agreements, determine that the payments have been missed, and then find a repo man, track these people down, and confiscate their car. But the loan agreement as a smart contract would mean that any verified non-payments or missed payments would automatically trigger a process in which the lender can go after the collateral, and in this case, it would be the car. So if we start to think more ahead of, you know, in the future, and we think about stuff like self-driving cars, non-payments can automatically result in the car being deactivated. So I know it sounds a little sci-fi-y, but think about other ways that te this technology can be used, for example, in supply chain management, or in markets where um, deceptive or really bad labor practices are really rampant. 
Vitalik Buterin made it so that smart contracts can be built on top of the Ethereum platform, which makes the Ethereum blockchain more useful since programs or applications that sit on the Ethereum blockchain can interact with each other. So this is actually why a lot of people call the Ethereum blockchain Bitcoin 2.0 because it basically does the digital payment thing, but also includes add-ons for a lot of features that you cannot do with a Bitcoin network. So there you have it, a super brief overview of the Ethereum blockchain and why there are so many people and companies who want to invest in this technology. Um, I'll post the transcript to this video on my website, talkblockchain2me.com. And as always, feel free to reach out to me via email if you have any specific questions or suggestions. For my next video, I will do an explainer on digital tokens and initial coin offerings or ICOs. And that is definitely an episode you do not want to miss. So stay tuned for that. And don't forget to click here to subscribe. And until then, I'll see you guys next time.